Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, Labour Party leaders have proposed a retirement age of 70 for politicians to ensure younger leaders assume national roles. LPs Kennedy and Hao to criticize older politicians, urging the National Assembly to pass a bill mirroring civil service retirement rules. President Bola Tinubu was encouraged to submit an executive bill mandating Beavers and electronic election results transmission. LP lawmaker Benedict Etana Bene um, linked leadership by retirees to Nigeria's economic and productivity challenges, advocating for youthful, energetic candidates. Now, joining us to discuss this this morning is Biodun Shoumi, is a public affairs analyst, as well as Comrade Mark Adebayo, who is the national spokesperson for CUPP. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Of course, I am a youth. Um, I'm a youth in Nigeria, and one thing that we've always wanted was the participation in politics, participation in any any sector that we want. And um, we've seen whereby youth just has the larger percent of our population. We take over 70% of our population. But sadly, we're not seeing as much participation when it comes to um, the elections, when it comes to politics. And now with this bill, it kind of makes sense. I know there was the not too young to rule um, campaign at some point, but we've not really seen the participation that we want. And with this bill, it's something that can just happen whereby the civil service is being um, mirrored in this case. And of course, the politicians have to retire at a certain age. Now, um, I would like to start with Comrade Mark because you are a spokesperson for CUPP. What do you think about this? And do you think it's something that should be embraced at this point? Uh, well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I think we are looking for uh, the wrong solution to the right problems. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot, we cannot limit uh, our issue, leadership crisis in Nigeria just to the factor of age alone. No, it is not. Because you see, uh, if you are talking about a youth, uh, younger people, the, the younger people have, have ruled this country more than the old, old, old ones. It's because of our uh, current and past bad experiences uh, that is making people to begin to make these suggestions about age limits in, in public uh, service. No, I, I don't think so. You know, how old was uh, the one when he became head of state in Nigeria? How old was Tafa when he became? The only people were under 40. You know, uh, the one was uh, just uh, getting to 30 or so. Now, how old was. Uh, Samedo of Liberia when he became president of that country. He was in his early 30s. So mm -hmm. we have seen young politicians, young people in office in this in this country, in this country that have uh, misbehaved, mm -hmm. that, have, that, that, that have not done well. So it's not about the age. How old is uh, Joe Biden? It is something. How old is the, the president elect? Uh, uh, Nobody is, there is no conversation around age limit when it comes to the development of a country and the progress of, of a people. It is because of our own sad and bad experiences here. And it has nothing to do with the age. It has, it has everything to do with orientation. It has everything to do with patriotism or lack of it. It has everything to do with capacity of lack of it. It has, it has everything to do uh, with, uh, with focus and revolutionary mindset or mm. lack of it. Mm. So that is it. At whatever age, it's not about, uh, it's not about uh, age limit is not the solution. Let's put the right people. If you put the right person mm. at the age of 75 in office, mm. it will be far better than when you put somebody of 25 or 35 years old in office who doesn't have anything to offer. The All right. question we should ask ourselves is that, do you have anything to offer? Right. It's not about the age. Okay. Okay. I, I, lo I love the fact that you've spoken about this, saying age doesn't matter. It depends on the right people. Um, I know that you spoke about Joe Biden. You spoke about Donald Trump. But if you look at Macron in France, he's young. And he was able to, um, you know, become their own leader there. And, of course, we know that. We know that. We know there are several people. To become, it's not the issue. To yes, sir. The issue. Yes, sir. Just let me land. So, uh, what I'm going to Macron, there have been five deadly mass protests against his leadership. So okay. It's not about whether to be valuable yes. or become, but can and you do better? Yes. We're saying, 
we're saying the same thing. We're saying the same thing, that it doesn't matter what age. So what I'm just driving at is, at the end of the day, an older person can also misbehave as well, because you said young people have misbehaved so far. But an older person can also misbehave, whether you're old, whether you're young, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, right? But let me come to Biodun. Biodun, what's your take on this? The fact that the Labour Party um, you know, chieftains are advocating for this, thinking it might just be the solution. Of course, Comrade Mark has already said it's definitely not a solution. It's not something we should be looking about at right now. But what is your own thoughts? Well, I tend to share uh, Comrade Mark's um, sentiments to okay. a large extent. Uh, because when you look at the issue, well, apart from the fact that um, I would always be against uh, age discrimination, Mm -hmm. either against the young or against the old. It does not matter. It depends on your mental capacity, your um, right. co orientation, your, how mm -hmm. to, your perspectives to issues that will inform you know, your delivery. So, uh, therefore, for me, um, it's about your capacity. Um, we have had situations, you can see the very recent one, a very young uh, member, as of perhaps we saw what he did to a bull driver and all that. A young man, um, we didn't see that from an old person. We out of cases of people who are very, very young uh, who became governors now being accused of, um, and, uh, you know, dealing, touching, or just on mere allegations of uh, 80 billion. Whether it is true or not, I don't know. Another one round something big. We don't know what is true since the court has not processed it. The fact of the matter is, um, you know, uh, when you actually look at the situation, you ask yourself, why are we calling for younger people? We want an inclusive society, yes. yes. We want a society where the aspirations of our youths can be reflected you know, in the policies being um, implemented by government, yes. We want a situation where, since the majority of our population, we are, we are having about 60% youth. 70, we want actually. We to be well represented so that they are not excluded. That is what, mm -hmm. in order to achieve that, it does not mean that we should serve political power, you know, like a like a dinner. You know, power is never uh, handed over or served like a like that. You know, you have to uh, compete for it. You have to bring up your own ideas. The fact that somebody is young does not make him a genius, and the fact that somebody is old does not make them uh, more genius. experienced. So, yeah. uh, ideas must compete. Ideas must compete, but I agree that we have to promote social inclusion, ensure that the youths are well represented, adequately represented. And in any case, why do we need a law? So there are sixty percent of the population; they can easily vote for whoever they want if they think it's a youthful leader. Let the youth come up with somebody. They have the uh, population. After all, uh, democracy is a function of numbers. Mm -hmm. So uh, by the time we now start saying we should come out like the Labour Party is advocating, you know, make it uh, mandatory through the legal process and, you know, only allow the youths to go for certain offices like the presidency. Then in that case, we are already admitting that even the youths are so deficient that they are not even, you know, to, um, uh, you know, to vote for their own interests in a democratic system. Mm. So but what you see is that the youths need to be included. But mm -hmm. again, you have the problem. Who controls the political machine you know, that nominates people? The law in this country does not make room for individual um, candidacy, independent candidacy. Mm -hmm. What the law says is you have to go through the political system. So if you are going through the political system, then you need um, a platform. And that platform, the major platforms currently, popular ones, um, the PDP, APC, and so on and so forth, yeah. Uh, NMPP and so on and so forth are controlled, you know, by those who founded them. That is all the right. super rich. But the youth can come up with a political party which they all embrace. And we've seen so many youths, you know, uh, coming out to contest for presidential election. The bottom line at the end of the day is Nigerians have not been voting for them. They've mm. actually been embracing whoever they think uh, should be the leader or okay. whoever okay. they think can lead. All right. Um, 
I, I love what you've said. Inclusion is important when it comes to the youth, when it comes to the aged. Everyone should be included, especially when it comes to our political climate, which is great. Um, Comrade Mark, I want to come to you now because you were of the opinion that, of course, uh, uh, an older leader maybe has more experience. But I'm sure there are people who would have a contrary opinion that if these older leaders have been in political powers for this long time, how come we've not been able to change our nation? How come we've not been able to whip up the economy? How come we're still here, still deficient as a nation? So I want to get your take on that. If you were to, um, if someone was to ask you that question, that all of the older people who have ruled so far, and I don't think 70 is such an old age for you to retire or so young for you to retire, but if someone was to ask, how come we're still here at this point? What would you be your response? My response would be that, uh, mind you, let me correct that impression. I never said the older people have more experience. Yeah, they have more experience, but of what use mm. has their experience been for the progress of Nigeria? For mm. me, it's almost, uh, it's, it's, it's almost not there. So I, I just want us to run away from regimenting uh, age right. as the major solution to our issues. And uh, because it is not, it, it is not, it's, it's not going to be the solution. Because now, uh, uh, the, the, the use, other 65, 70 percent of the voting population, they, they must bring that to bear in their own capacity to organize and manage their numbers. And be able, you see, nobody is going to tell you I'm old. I'm no longer uh, going to be uh, to be contesting for election. No, <laughs> nobody is going to yield uh, space for you. You know, you have to earn for political parties in this country. We have YP, which is youth party. Yeah. What what uh, what in uh, those ones should build around the youth demographic and then make sure that they, they do the, the, the needful. Nobody's going to say yield is space for you and give us a chance. Nobody you take it. Is is nobody's going to give you give us a chance, give us opportunity, give us clinical percentage. Nobody's going to nobody gives power to anybody. You take it. You know, you take it by fire by force. And you know, if we like the majority of, uh, of the politically active youth nowadays are well educated. They must bring that the education, the modernity, the um, this is a ICT. They must bring all those ones to be able to organize themselves mm. and then be able to take over power. But the thing is that nobody should be under any illusion that it is because when the youth come to power, everything will be you know, able to no, it, it depends on their orientation. It depends on the kind of ideology they are bringing to bear. If they are going to continue the culture of lutocracy, it is it, it, it doesn't matter what age the president is, what age the governor or the ministers are. It mm. is it is a function. Uh, effective leadership is a function of commitment to the progress and development of a society. It is not about age. You understand? So mm. it's not about whether if you are older you do better, or if you are younger you not do well, or if you are younger you do better. No, the energy of youth is there. The energy of youth is there. But to what extent are you going to use that uh, deploy that energy? That is what we should. You know, let, 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 let's talk about voting the right people, getting the right people to power, and the youth themselves must come together. It's an indict, indictment on that demographic that they are still allowing, you know, even the youth are not voting for themselves. Mm -hmm. They are not voting for themselves. All right. You put the youth there, you put, people vote for their pocket, people vote for their stomach, it's about stomach infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And for as long as they don't change their orientation, mm -hmm. you know, they have the capacity to be the one to dominate, to, to dominate the political space of Nigeria. But they are not doing that yet because they are not well organized. Mm. We have young, uh, right. young Democratic Party. We have the Youth Party. How many of the youth are there? How many of the youth voted for the presidential candidates of those of those mm. parties that are mm. even the African Demo ADC, African Demo uh, Democratic Congress, and uh, uh, what's this? Right, uh, Shibuya uh, Party. Yeah. We have young people in the political space. Their mm. own people are not voting for them. The youth, I young people are I not think... voting for them. Yes, I, I think it's important that the youth governize themselves because, of course, if we have about 70% of that population and we're not seeing it reflect in the numbers, um, that means there's a deficiency somewhere. That means there is a problem somewhere. And at the end of the day, it's about who is going to deliver, not just because you're young and we feel like you should um, be the leader. You should be, oh, we look at your manifesto. We say this is something that we can follow. This is something that we can move on with. This is something that we trust. Um, 
or this is a leader that we trust that would change Nigeria for the better. So I totally agree with your point of view. It shouldn't be about, you know, the age, but with this, with what the um, labor chieftains are saying is when you get to a certain age, you should be able to retire. So it's not even about bringing people into the pool and saying, why are the youths um, not participating or why are they not coming? It's just you have to take it up, um, cut it off from the top so that more people can come into the pool. But um, Biodu, I want to get your take. Of course, now, one thing we've established is the fact that it shouldn't just be about age. But if there are certain measures that you think we need to find um, a good leader with, that we think a good leader needs to possess so that people can be able to vote for them and ensure that, you know, um, Nigeria is a better nation, what do you think those um, measures would be? How do we measure a good leader in Nigeria? Because that's certainly what we want right now. Okay, I think we've lost Mr. Biodrin's audio. Comrade Mark, do you want to take that? What do you think that yes, these yes, are yeah. the things that we need to look out for when it comes to um, a leader or maybe even a youth? What do you think the youths need to do better to ensure that people can start to vote for them and follow them? The day the youth of this country come together and organize and unite, mm. that's the day political revolution begins in Nigeria. It's not about regimenting, it's about law, it's not about uh, legalizing age or, or, or limiting age. The day the youth of this country should arise. In fact, they are the youth, but they are the giants of the giant of Africa. The youth of this country are <laughs> like the giant that. of the giant of Africa. But the day they realize their capacity, they are the power, the awesome power they, they have, and they are sincere and patriotic about it. That is the day, that is the beginning of the political and socioeconomic liberation of Nigeria. Uh, we can only encourage them, we can only be, let's be, uh, continue to uh, encourage them to organize rather than agonizing. Organize, don't uh, agonize. The day they rise up and uh, at the day they awesome the incredible power and capacity that they have, that is the beginning of the liberation of Nigeria. Meanwhile, before I close, when we talk about youth leadership, I'm, I'm still waiting for what uh, the the Senegalese president is going to do differently. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling him yet. I'm not feeling the vibe yet. I'm not seeing the kind of uh, you know uh, rapid development that we are looking for. Uh, I, you know, in, in Senegal, and being the uh, I think one of the youngest S of, of, of state in this country, I was expecting speed. I was expecting revolutionary turnaround of everything in Senegal. We are not, I, I'm not feeling that vibe yet. Hopefully, maybe it's just building gradually. I don't know. But when it comes to the issue of age, anybody can make the difference. Whatever age uh, demographic that you find yourself, it depends on your orientation, your mentality, what you have decided to bring to bear on the, uh, for, for your country. That is what is important. That's what is important. The energy of youth is there, but is that, it, it, are you going to convert that energy into patriotic endowment for the development and progress and success of your country. That is the question we saw ourselves. I am for the youth. I am for the younger generation to come and give us a new direction where uh, maybe things can, can be better. But also, we have seen countries where older people have done, uh, have done, have done well. Uh, it's just about your own, you know, um, your own strategic orientation, your own ideological orientation about leadership, about service to, to humanity right, that will now determine how you behave. You know, all these people who are looting the money, who are, you know, terrorizing people on social media, who are trying to now uh, keep our mouth shut and the rest of that, who don't want us all to right, talk sir. about our rights and the rest of yeah. that. They, I think they, they are not working for Nigeria, they are working for themselves. <laughs> we want people to well, work for our country. Yes, stomach, stomach infrastructure, like you called it. Anyways, I think we have Mr. Biodun back. So, Mr. Biodun, I was asking for some measures. I mean, beyond setting the age limits, um, whereby people have to, or the youth have to participate or be more included when it comes to politics in Nigeria, I was asking what things, what values do you think um, a good leader in Nigeria needs to possess? Because if the youths are not voting for themselves, that means there's something wrong. So if we have uh, someone who is a youth that is going for office, what kind of um, values do you think they need to possess? What measures, what are the metrics we need to use to be able to vote this leader in? Everybody, whether old or young, particularly the younger generation who um, I agree should be included, you know, so mm -hmm. socially, whether we like it or not, and politically, into the governance of the country. Because you cannot have a country that will not work for everybody. Mm. Um, for instance, there are issues that I uh, probably will not know so much about, or the desires or the, um, the, the needs of a younger generation. And, in fact, how to even promote their inclusion. I may not even 
know as much as they will know. They probably will know themselves better. But the most important thing is uh, they have to be patriotic. Mm -hmm. That you're looking at uh, a new set of leadership, particularly if you're talking about the youth, you know, with um, good orientation, uh, possibly ideological orientation, well-focused, mm -hmm. disciplined, and with some shared values, not only you know, the values of the younger generation, but they have some shared values, even with the older generation, mm. so that you don't try and solve the problem by creating another one. Mm. And then um, if they have the necessary discipline, then I don't see the reason why we cannot um, um, promote the social inclusion of the youth mm. uh, in Nigeria. Oh. We already have a major problem, because if you look at the way global economy is going, it's really getting more... Uh, uh, technology savvy and we need those who know much more about that those youths to take over the running of the economy in a way that they can promote the concept of the dig digital economy that um, the federal government is trying to do it's not only in nigeria that we have the digital economy um, as a focus it's the same thing happening in other African countries. All so, right. therefore, we need those who are more savvy in that area, you know, to come on board mm. and be able to do it. But we must consider while we have the good, uh, uh, the good and the bad in the older generation, so also we have the good and the bad in the younger generation. Mm. But the bottom line at the end of the day is we need a more patriotic, more enlightened, more savvy, tech savvy. Uh, with um, shared values uh, used to, to, to be involved All right. in the governance process. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Um, I think you both have spoken really well. And it doesn't, I think bottom line of this, it doesn't matter what age it is. At the end of the day, we just need the right kind of people, people that have the political will mm -hmm. to just change Nigeria for the better. And for the youths, I think it's important that we start to integrate ourselves into you know, the political system in Nigeria. A lot of people do not even know their local government chairman. A lot of people do not know the councillors. A lot of people do not know how to go in the, into the grassroots. And of course, with politics in Nigeria, we have our own peculiarities. You need to get into the grassroots, get integrated, and then you start to climb up really as they say so i think it's important that we start to galvanize ourselves as youths and participate when it comes to politics in nigeria gentlemen i want to say thank you so much for coming it's always a pleasure having you both on our show thank you so much thank you for having me thank you comrade mark All right, we're speaking with Biodun Shomi, he's a public affairs analyst, and Comrade Mark Adebayo, he's a national spokesperson for CUPP. And we've just been speaking, well, discussing about the, the LP chieftains who are advocating for the age limit when it comes to politics in Nigeria. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be discussing KMO, who has unveiled airport marshals to boost airport standards and curb misconduct. Please stay with us.